Okay, let's see. Make sure we're live. Cool. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. And today is April 12th, 2019. Yesterday, Julian Assange was arrested and pulled out of the Ecuadorian embassy, and uh, he's in custody in the UK, uh, waiting to go through the machine and to be extradited to the United States. Okay, by all accounts. Now, yesterday we did a live stream, a couple hours, uh, just dealing with the topic and covered a fair bit of information. And this is day two of two of the live stream where uh, I sort of had originally, you know, we had already originally scheduled to play our 10 by 10 puzzle, um, but uh, this happened and uh, I rescheduled everything to, we'll play the games at another time, the 10 by 10 puzzle at another time. But I thought it was important to cover, uh, you know, open up the floor, just open discussion on what has taken place. And we covered a lot of stuff yesterday. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of information being shared. And um, I definitely thought two days of live streaming for this was definitely worth it and something we should do and we must do. And uh, this is the second day that we're going to do this. Okay. Um, so we're going to give it a, a few minutes for people to roll in. And um, hello, great lasagna. How are you doing? How's life? Hope you're doing well, brother or sister. Of course, always, always, always. X salutations. Okay. Um, so we're going to give everyone a couple of minutes to roll in. And then uh, we'll start off. There's a couple of things I'd like to read you in from 2013 that I wrote. Hello, Fast Car. How are you doing? I was very disappointed to hear this news yesterday. Yeah, me too. Uh, devastated when I woke up in the morning. I wake up fairly early and I got the news around uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, 5.30 my time, Pacific time, uh, West Coast Canada time. And uh, it was just like, ooh, I had a someone messaged me on Twitter saying if I had heard the news and I just, I told them that I'm just catching up. So I caught up and I've just been consuming news for the last couple of, couple of days, uh, sorting things out a little bit more grounded today than yesterday. Yesterday I was, my blood, uh, uh, I was, I was pissed, right? I am still, but usually it takes a day or two to uh, after being kicked up to such a level to sort yourself out for me anyway so I've pretty much sorted myself out and getting my strategy together of what we're going to do I've already messaged, messaged a couple of people and whatnot and slowly pulling out information that we will be sharing there's a couple of things I'd like to read you guys life's great uh, great lasagna says I was anxiously waiting for this part too yeah me too me too I was trying to consume as much information as I could hello Connor how are you doing Connor plays MCXX MC XX is 20 I don't know what the MC stands for uh, so I've been consuming a fair bit of information watching lectures reading some of the stuff that I've uh, written before um, some of the stuff that I knew, checking some of my bookmarks and whatnot, right? Uh, this Assange arrest makes it really clear how people have no principles. The same people that loved Assange started to hate him when Wik uh, WikiLeaks leaks the DNC emails. 100% racer. Um, and I've, like, since loading on the, loading on part one of the video on YouTube, uh, you know, I have a fairly consistent, uh, you know, on a daily basis, I get a certain number of additional subscribers. So there's a certain amount of growth in my channel on YouTube um, and in the work I do in general online, right? And I can make predictions. I do. That's one of the reasons I love mathematics, right? You can take a look at what's going on and see the trends and stuff like this. But since I loaded that video yesterday on YouTube, I've already lost subscribers like I'm losing a little bit of subscribers right because I I did rustle some feathers and some feathers need to be shaken out um, just speaking the truth pisses people off because there are people that live in bubbles um, 
self-imposed and imposed from external sources as well, right? And I can understand if people are um, don't want, uh, you know, if they're subscribed to me for ASMR, or if they're subscribed to me for comic books, or whatever it is that they're subscribed to me, they don't really want the politics to filter into their lives, right? But for me, as someone, you know, as someone that produces work that likes to create this content, it is really, really important to address certain situations that have come up in the world uh, for me to have a peace of mind that allows me to create the other content that I'm creating, right? Like, for example, Charlie Chaplin in The Great Dictator in the movie that he put out, he ended the movie with this political speech, right? So if Charlie Chaplin, one of the, and if you've never watched a Charlie Chaplin movie, uh, grab his whole library, start from the, you know, the first thing he ever produced and watch the whole thing to the end, right? And then look into his politics and what he stood for and uh, where he ended up in Switzerland, why he left the United States and all this jazz, right? Charlie Chaplin is one of the uh, greatest uh, individual artists that I know of uh, in this century anyway, right? Uh, in my ancestral that I remember history okay so even he needed to speak out and I believe as someone who creates content and as a human being really there are times that show up that you must stand firm this for me is one of them right for others it might be other things and I can appreciate that okay hello Chicho I was very disappointed to hear this news uh, it's great. Chicho, da, ba, ba, ba. Uh, da, da, da. Interesting to see uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, I checked that out. Very good, very good. Come out in support of Assange, much to the disdain of the Democrats. Uh, I wish Tulsi Gabbard, uh, you know, the same thing that I wish that Ron Paul and Dennis Kucinich would have done is separate from the Democrats. Democrats are compromised, okay? Anybody that thinks otherwise uh, has learned nothing from history. Nothing from history, okay? Is Connor Wolf? Ah, Riot! Elite Riot, awesome. Connor Wolf, how are you doing, Connor? Riot, Elite, I don't know which one to call you, okay? Um, so let me, let me follow that up with, because I've, I've mentioned this before, I've been following... Uh, politics, economics, whistleblowers, Wikipedia, Snowden, Assange, for a while now, right? And there is something happened that in, in 2013 with Snowden. And people have to really appreciate, luckily, Ron did uh, eventually switch over to the Libertarian Party. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Tulsi did once she's out of political office. Uh, the sooner Tulsi does it, the better, okay? Uh, because we can tell right now with some of the top people in the Democratic uh, Party, one of them being there's some, there's two, I don't even try to put their names into, use up memory space to, uh, you know, hard, hard disk space in my brain to even memorize their names, right? Uh, but one of them came out today um, he's the male in the Congress, uh, equivalent to Pelosi. Pelosi's in my mind for ridiculous. I'll purge that name at some point, hopefully. He's equivalent to her, right? And he came out and said, hopefully now that with Assange's arrest, we'll find out uh, exactly how Russia interfered in elections. It's like, what are, what universe are these people from? And what universe are the people who actually are subscribed to these people's feeds and follow and support these individuals who are completely delusional okay what what universe are these people from that they still parrot the same crap all right uh thought it would be better if she went independent while in office me too i think it would be better as well yeah chuck schumer that joe blow that's the guy's name yeah what a, i mean he is one of the top people in the Democratic Party. If I belong to an organization with him as one of the top people, I'd resign. I'd get, I'd get out. 
him? Where would you follow this guy to? To hell? Like, it's crazy. Like, seriously. Ridiculous, right? He's the democratic senator. That's who he is. Fast car, thank you for taking care of business. Thank you for taking care of business. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what that comment was. <laughs> crazy. We do need names. Welcome, welcome to stream. Okay. Now, let me read you a couple of things I wrote back in 2013. And I've written stuff pre this as well. Um, I just picked these two because they're important. Uh, they relate to uh, Latin America, okay, with Ecuador being in play, okay, South America. They relate to uh, whistleblowers. They relate to Wikipedia. They relate to Julian Assange. And it brings in Snowden. And all of this you could sort of connect up with julian assange right you can't possibly support our president though no i don't support of course not of course not about uh beverages the guy trump came out and said i don't <laughs> seriously does anybody actually believe that trump uh decides anything just like bush jr that came out and said i'm the decider did anybody actually believe that bush jr was the decider really or obama who what uh, i also noticed that alexandra cosa cortez liked the tweet that was supportive of assange i'd love to see her actually come out in support of him yeah alexandra ocasa cortez if she hasn't come out right now okay and by the end of today it would have been have to been yesterday or before assange will pull out right i i don't follow her i don't she doesn't really mean anything to me right uh because she is part of the democratic party right uh it, it it's irrelevant to me she will not bring about any major changes in regards to geopolitics right in regards to u.s domestic policy possibly both destructive and constructive right but what will make and break the united states of america is u.s foreign policy not u.s domestic policy okay uh you don't have to be a Republican to dislike Democrats no you don't you could be a Democrat and dislike Democrats okay you just haven't taken the plunge to realize that that it that institution does not represent you yet and I can appreciate that it takes time to really appreciate how brainwashed you have been how much time energy and money you have wasted supporting an institution that has betrayed betrayed not only you but all of humanity right i know i'm fairly new to the channel and just getting my bearing about beverages okay okay i agree she might be uh she might be further left but she still fails in line falls in line with her party when it matters to them yeah what do you mean by foreign policy is the one thing that makes or breaks the u.s please explain okay in regards to foreign policy just look at u.s uh, discretionary spending more than 50 percent of u.s uh, revenue basically that comes in okay from the government is spent on the military okay huge 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 most of that wasted is just payoffs and siphoned off right right now one of the pressures according to the present administration and by all accounts one of the pressures that western worlds feel right now is the mass migration of refugees and those who are seeking asylum okay and illegal immigrants and people who cross the border illegally and stuff like this one of the biggest economic pressure pressures on western countries when it comes to domestic policy is this influx of so-called foreigners into the country right and i'm using certain words that are brushing off right so please don't hold me to be politically correct and use the right words and all these things i'm trying to get the idea across right now why is that happening to the western countries western world where there's a huge influx like we're talking tens of millions of people millions have crossed already and tens of millions will cross in the next decade or two okay the reason that they're coming is because of u.s foreign policy one of the best examples is aside from latin america what the united states has done in latin america with like just look at the history of it right 
one of the most uh, recent events would be the destruction of Libya, right? Libya was the country in Africa with the highest standard of living. Uh, in 2011, it was reduced to rubble, okay? And it became a country where there was open slave markets in the centers of their cities, right? They're selling people, leveled, destroyed. And what was the result of that? The result of that, that became a node, a uh, pipeline for millions of people seeking asylum, escaping other uh, wars of aggression, other war resource wars, other economic wars, uh, proxy wars to f flow through Libya into, uh, into Europe, Western Europe, right? That is having tremendous effects on European economy, European lifestyle, European identity. So it's not the European domestic policy that is one of the biggest um, uh, hurdles, one of the biggest issues that Europeans face. It's European foreign policy because it wasn't just the United States that destroyed Libya. Canada partook, partook in it, UK, France, Italy, uh, uh, Spain, I believe, did as well. Germany did. They helped destroy Libya, okay? So Europeans that are against this influx of refugees coming in that blame the refugees for escaping the death and destruction that the Western powers, their own governments, their own banks brought upon them, okay, should not be blaming the refugees. They should be pointing the finger at their banks and their politicians and holding them accountable. And that inclu includes uh, putting them on trial for war crimes, foreign policy for sure, but also internet. People realize that they can migrate to richer countries now. Uh, I can honestly tell you, Racer, uh, if Western foreign policy was not as destructive as it was, as it has been throughout the decades, the number of refugees and asylum seekers and illegal immigrants, okay, uh, would... Uh, da, 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 let me just would be a fraction of what it is right fast curves not that we hate immigrants we hate the idea that people come illegally da, da, da. i'm gonna allow that Doop. for sure um okay so that's huge 100 percent. republicans have nothing but hatred towards immigrants but they refuse to acknowledge that trump's foreign policy and obama's and bush's before him and and Clinton's and Bush senior and Ronald Reagan and so on and so forth is the main cause of it. One of the ones would be for Bush uh, senior would be Panama or Reagan would be Panama, right? Reagan and Bush tag teaming, right? Right now the US sanctions against Iran is keeping them from being able to receive certain, yeah, for sure. Only a minority come from actual war zones. Most of them uh, from which haven't uh, had any war. Um, I tend to disagree. Uh, if you look at the data, and I've, and I've looked at the data in, in the past where I was blogging, I forget what the numbers were. I, I probably have them on my site, but I don't wanna go through digging that, that information up. The uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Afghanistan, when US invaded Afghanistan was, and Afghanistan had other issues beforehand. It's been a proxy war since, the 1970s between USSR and the United States and stuff, but we won't get into that, right? Afghanistan was a huge chunk of war of refugees. After that, when we invaded Iraq, okay, Iraq became one of the largest uh, percentages of refugees. And then we had Yemen, okay, uh, Syria. So where we wage war creates huge, huge number of refugees. And I can honestly tell you, most people that are refugees, they wish, they wish they could stay home. Most people that leave everything behind, not just material possessions, but loved ones, family that make their way to other parts of the world because of war, because of economic uh, 
foreign causes of economic turmoil, resource wars, basically, they don't, they don't want to leave their homeland. Do you really want to leave your homeland and go somewhere else? They really don't. The only reason they're doing it is because of external forces. Okay. Where I come from, I talk about Papa Pascar. Uh, is not that hate the uh, the global mi uh, migrants are three percent of the total number of humanity 97 percent stay where they are born it's like this if uh, someone comes into your house unannounced what are you going to do allow them in or kick them out now stacy I've, I've had other people give me this example here's the example here's a here's a counter argument to you if you go and burn down your neighbor's homes right and kick kick your neighbors out of their homes take it over because maybe they have a better pipeline of water or better electricity and stuff like that and you and then you get pissed off because the people in your neighborhood want to come and stay in your house whose fault is that really okay really whose fault is that okay this is this is it's a ridiculous argument, by the way, Stacy. Uh, um, stay, stay classy, <laughs> Stacy. Stay classy, okay? Immigrants are not coming onto your private property, country, and the land, and it's uh, public property. No one comes from Yemen, actually. Yemen is Yemen is closed off. There were Yemenis that are refugees, but Yemen is blockaded now, right? Yemen is a bloody disaster. We're going off on politics. I did want to focus on whistleblowers and uh, whatever it is, but uh, you have millions of Moroccans. It's too hard for them to leave, and it's uh, legal for approach country border, and it's not the other races. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Some say yes, but ba -ba 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 -ba. And it's stay classy. Stay classy. I read it correctly. I read names um, uh, with difficulty. Let's say. Okay. I see your point. See you guys later. You all have a good night. Good night, stay classy. Disagree. They leave to Europe because it's richer uh, and they think it will give them the best possible chance in life, uh, just like Europeans that left for America. And okay, race killer, racer kill. Why did the Europeans leave for America? Because they were living under totalitarian governments that only thought of the rich only provided money for the rich and took land away from them they couldn't have land and anybody that spoke out they had militaries and police forces that basically uh, disappeared people and killed people and tortured people okay imprisoned people they left because of their leaders right now in a lot of the African, South American, whatever countries we're talking about, where there's a huge influx of migrants and refugees and stuff like this, who are those leaders? Okay, a lot of them are either dictators supported by Western worlds, they're either um, puppet governments uh, supported by the Western world, or they're people that they put into power by conducting coups to eliminate people to get rid of governments that were elected democratically by their people right one of the best examples is uh, Mohammad Mozadek from 1950s in Iran it was a democratically elected government in Iran the United States UK together overthrew that government and put in a dictator really you have to appreciate this you can't just say they're escaping for economic reasons there is economic factor in there but why has the economic factor come into play okay and a path to citizenship is easier bah, 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 bah. no some Europeans sure but most didn't leave because it was horrible in fact they left in this in the time while life was improving really fast it's just that they thought it would be better in the US just because life is improving very fast if you're living in the gutters how fast is that life improving is that life improving fast enough for you to get out of a gutter or for your children to get out of the gutter for example Irish people left because it was horrible they were starving race race or kill why were they starving okay you bring them Ireland why were they starving okay 
if you don't know why they were starving read um, Bobby Sands poem that I put out a video for the reading for okay it's two and a half minute video and you can read the poem I got the link in the description of that, that video now once you read that poem look into the references that he makes in that poem why did the Irish leave life expected was improving fast during those times though no other country starved like our uh, the, like Irish that's a very special example and why was it starving was there a potato famine why was there a potato famine were were they able to grow potatoes they were able to grow potatoes by why weren't f or food in general by why wasn't that food being given to the Irish why was it being exported to another nation that had control over it that said life was really horrible during 18th it was okay now back to whistleblowers Julian Assange WikiLeaks okay here's a couple of articles that I wrote I'm gonna read them to you and let me provide the links to you as well okay one of them is called uh, here here's the link for it okay and the title of this article and I'm just gonna read it to you I've quoted a lot of things here but the title of this article is so let me get this straight we fast track renditions but hunt down whistleblowers on presidential planes okay and this is referring to an incident that occurred in 2013 where the plane of uh, Morales Bolivian president was not allowed was not given a flight path to leave Europe okay to go back to Bolivia because the United States believed that Edward Snowden was on that plane and they gave out the order to all the European countries to prevent a pres presidential plane okay to fly over their country so it was diverted and it was it landed in Spain I have to read this to remember where it landed it landed in Spain and they boarded this presidential plane just like the UK police that entered the Ecuadorian embassy but that was a traitor um, from uh, their own president and I'll, let me read you this this quote uh, from uh, Paul uh, Paul Craig Roberts okay regarding um, uh, Moreno's betrayal of Ecuadorian people betrayal of Snowden betrayal of um, the laws of international laws right and this is from an article that Paul Craig Roberts put out it's called the age of injustice okay and let me give you the link for that as well and the first sentence basically says this the first sentence says this uh, and the and the article again here let me give you the link for this Oop. and by the way uh, when I'm gonna read this thing I won't have a chance to read the comments on chat my apologies but I do want to get this out of the way first okay so this is the article that Paul Craig Roberts put out he titled it the age of injustice and this is the first sentence that he's written right the first paragraph on April 11 2019 uh, April 11 to the quote April 11 2019 brought us a new new word for Judas Moreno the puppet president of Ecuador who sold Julian Assange to Washington for his 30 pieces of silver okay important sentence right there okay and that is exactly what Moreno did okay so this is sort of this article that I put out in 2013 in regards to the Bolivian president's plane not being allowed to fly over European countries because European countries in general are have been puppets of the US administration right any US administration they've been getting their marching orders from the United States so this is the article that I wrote so I'm gonna read this to you and I'm only gonna put things in quotes when I've blocked uh, created a quote block okay there are quotes that I use in the write-up as well but a lot of it is just my writing if I don't use the quotes but there are quotes in there as well okay so it's titled so let me get this straight we fast-track renditions but hunt down whistleblowers on presidential planes okay. I'm gonna uh, quote this one as well it's a long sentence uh, so quote the CIA was granted permission to use rendition to the US of in indicate in, 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 
inducted terrorists in a presidential uh, directive signed by U.S. President Bill Clinton in 1995 following a procedure established by U.S. President George H.W. Bush in January 1993, end quote. This program kicked into high gear under Bush Jr. after 9-11 and continued to this day under the Obama administration. Remember, this article was put out in 2013 that I wrote out, okay? Quote, according to a U.S. Congressional Congress report 2018, up to 14,000 people may have been victims of rendition and secret, secret detentions, detentions since 2001. Some report, reports estimate there have been twice as many. The U.S. admits to have captured more than 80,000 prisoners in his war on terror. End quote. The map below shows the countries involved in fast-tracking rendition flights, helping to transport U.S. captives to secret prisons, black sites across the globe, condemning innocent men, women, and children con to confine confinement, torture, and death. To the best of my knowledge, not a single rendition flight was ever grounded or searched. Okay. And then there's a picture to a map. And yet, European countries, especially France, Spain, Portugal, and Italy, had the audacity to deny passage of Evo Morales' Bolivian presidential plane, quote, over suspicions that whistleblower Edward Stone was potentially aboard, end quote. To put this into perspective, this would be equivalent to denying passage to Air Force One while it was trans transporting Obama because another country thought that one of their citizens might be on board. Absurd. And yet, Western mainstream media is treating this as if it was just a simple mistake, an embarrassment of sorts. Okay. And then there's a video that I linked to um, Evo Morales uh, commenting on this, right? As Malcolm X warned, warned us in his Audubon ballroom speech in Harlem in 13th December 1964, quote, quoting Malcolm X right now, the press is so powerful in its image making role, it can make criminal, it can make a criminal look like he's the victim and make the victim look like he's the criminal. This is the press in irresponsible press. If you aren't careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. Okay. I continue with the article. To help put about put the above events into uh, into into the appropriate light, specifically uh, on how they relate to how WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and whistleblowers like. Uh, Jessalyn Raddock, uh, Thomas Andrew Drake, William Beeney, Bradley Manning, and Edward Snowden are being treated and portrayed by U.S. government and the majority of Western mainstream media. Below you will find a special Democracy Now! segment from 2007 uh, event on how the Pentagon Papers came to be published by the Beacon Press, as told by Daniel Esber, Mike Gra Gravel, and Robert West. The panel highlights the depth to which criminals will go to to hide their crimes and stifle dissent. Okay, and the rest of this is a quote uh, from the article. Should I read this to you guys as well? Let me see where the chat is going. Da, 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 da. Hopefully, it's going okay. Let me read this to you as well. Okay, and the link to the Democracy Now sort of panel telling us how the Pentagon Papers came to be uh, discussion is there, right? Quote. 41 years ago, Beacon Press lost a Supreme Court case brought against it by the U.S. government for publishing the first full edition of the Pentagon Papers. It is now well known how the New York Times first published excerpts of the talk, top secret documents in June 1971. But less well known is how the Beacon Press, a small, a small non-profit publisher affiliated with the Unitarian uh, universe, Universalist Association came to publish the complete 7,000 pages that expose the true history of U.S. involvement in Vietnam. Their publication led to the, led to the Beacon Press into a spiral of two and a half year, 
years of harassment, intimidation, near bankruptcy, and possibly of criminal pr prosecution. This is a story that has rarely been told in its entirety. The re uh, relevance of our experience those 35 years ago to secrecy and deception in government today is patently obvious. For example, three of the issues and principles that were involved in our in our court actions were misuse of power of the Justice Department, invasion of privacy, and misuse of secrecy by the government. All of those clearly apply to what is happening today. In, the, in his 1972 uh, descending opinion in the Gravel case, Supreme Court Justice Douglas said, quote, the story of the Pentagon Papers is a chronicle of the suppression of vital decisions uh, vital decisions to protect the re reputation and political hides of men who work ama an amazingly successful scheme of deception on the american people end quote and he went on to say in that decision that he had no choice but to hold that it was the government that is lawless not the press in 1971 senator gravel wrote the pentagon papers show that we have created a new culture protected from the influence of American life by the shield of secrecy. Okay. Extremely important bit of information. Okay. That and I have links going to multiple different sources uh, that I think is very relevant to what is happening to Julian Assange. Okay. Now, if you're watching this video on another platform after the live stream, I'll provide the link in the description of this video. And let me and I put that article out in July 6, 2013. Here's a follow up article I put out in on July 11th, 2013. And I was following the events of what was happening with uh, Snowden. And I've been following the stuff quite, uh, quite closely for quite some time. And we were all on the computer, glued to the computer, trying to find out if the US government had got a hold of Snowden, uh, what had happened with all the leaks, who had that information, where the leaks were going to come out, and what was going to happen. And we found out that, I believe in July 11th or 10th or something, that Snowden was in Russia, was given asylum in Russia, or he was in the airport, right? And here's the title of the other piece that I put out regarding this topic. Okay, and I titled this topic, and this is very relevant to what's going on with Julian Assange, right? And please do not forget, the only reason we got Snowden documents, the only reason that Edward Snowden found safe passage and he's not in a black hole right now, most likely suicided while he would have been tortured for multiple years, right? The only reason that Snowden right now is able to tweet where he's got three and a half million or four million followers on Twitter that are listening to what he has to say. The only reason that we have Snowden that has a voice of dissent that is released a pretty important papers right manning very very important but snowden as well very important wikileaks above all most important okay the things that have come out through there the only reason that snowden is alive right now is because of wikileaks and julian assange they ran through their network and found uh edward snowden safe passage okay here's the here's what the article the piece I put on is very short. Okay, why the U.S. government has such a hard on for Edward Snowden? Snowden. That's the title of the piece that I put out. Okay, it's not the act of. So I'm going to read the article and I'll tell you where I've quoted stuff, block quoted anyway. It's not the act of revealing secrets that has gotten Edward Snowden in trouble. After all, members of the Bush administration did exactly that in the Palmer affair as did members of the Obama administration by leaking the drone memo, leaking classified documents, doesn't always lead to prosecution. On the contrary, sometimes it leads to advancement of personal agendas. Quote, does the rule of law demand, and I'm quoting articles that I've linked in the article, by the way, okay? So quote, does the rule of law demand that leaks of highly classified information be prosecuted? If so, John Brennan, and many other current and former national security officials had better be given orange jumpsuits. They weren't even leaking to alert Americans to 
uh, to behavior that they found immoral. Oftentimes, the U.S. National Security Estab Establishment leaks to exploit a political advantage, end quote, right? And I continue on with my writing. The reason that the United States government is so adamant about getting their hands on Snowden is because, as Chris, Chris Hedges pointed out in Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, while discussing popular uprisings, when referring, when referencing Victor Sebastian's book, Revolution 1989, The Fall of the Soviet Empire, in which he was chronicling the events leading up to the collapse of East Germany, the dissolution of the Stasi and the fall of the Berlin Wall, quote, this was the turning point when the people knew that the regime lacked the will or the strength to maintain power, end quote. And the book that I'm quoting from is this thing, and I believe I took it out uh, while I was uh, reading it. I've taken a lot of notes in this book, and I've done a review of this book, and we've done a little bit of reading of this book and stuff like this too, right? I continue on with this piece. The U.S. government cannot allow Snowden to live happily ever after. If they do, then a precedent will be set and it will be their undoing. As Snowden pointed out in his July, July 1st statement, the U.S. government is after him for doing an unauthorized release of classified documents because, quote, now I'm quoting Edward Snowden, in the in the end, the Obama, Obama administration is not afraid of whistleblowers like me, Bradley Manning, or Thomas Drake. We are stateless, imprisoned, or powerless. No, the Obama administration is afraid of you. It is afraid of an informed, angry public demanding the constitutional government it was promised. And it should be. End quote. Okay. And that's the other piece that i put on in july 11th 2013 and i've written a fair bit more about this topic during that period before that period and a little bit after that period okay i just wanted to introduce this video laid out on you laid that on you guys and provide you both links and i believe i did uh, provide you both links and both those articles apply to what has happened with julian assange and the demonization of WikiLeaks and the silence, the deafening silence of the citizens of both the UK, the majority, like uh, most people are very busy with their lives and political turmoil and stuff like this and making ends meet. But there should be mass mobilization of people to oppose this draconian path that we're on to a crazy world right totalitarian state as chris hedges puts it quoting referencing sheldon walden inverted totalitarian regimes that we are under okay where economics trumps politics i'm just going to catch up on some of the talk here some of the chat uh, my apologies if i'm a little behind if i skip anything oh no what they did to julian assange it's terrible i better watch out what i say Hey, Chicho, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well, man. My favorite Marx brother. Yonok, Yonok, Yonok. <laughs> how many will live their lives? Da, 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 da. Iskar, replace the welfare system with UBI and similar programs. UBI gives the same result. Bah, 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 bah. It's similar to the entitlement system. Bah, bah, bah. If there were never any whistleblowers, then there would be no need for government to even have a semblance of transparency. We should praise them all as heroes. 100% Horn. 100% Horn. Matthew Horn, I, be, I believe that would be Matt Horn. Okay. Greetings, Chicho. Greetings, Zare. I hope you're doing well. Oh, I hope your Friday is going well and that you're healthy. Uh, you're healthy, all things considered. Uh, you too, brother. You too, and everyone on here. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing well, brother. Thank you very much. I'm drinking some nettle tea. I have the privilege of having access to this okay I have some things to do I should be back before the end of the stream okay Fascar thanks for popping by watch the chat trolls are about tonight Osman <laughs> Fascar uh, thank you for covering this in depth I feel the man will never come out alive he won't sell out he won't sell out um, cozy I agree with you 
Uh, I don't believe Julian Assange will sell out. Uh, Bradley Manning uh, has shown uh, she will not sell out. Are too many eyes on this for him to die? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. He could easily be uh, suicided. Okay. Uh, I just hope Julian Assange. My only fear is that Julian Assange will be cornered into a spot will he will when he that he will go on hunger strike okay and knowing the history of Bobby Sands and I looked into the medical um, through the documentary and I looked into what it means to go on hunger strike or be on hunger strike right what the timeline is right and he is quite weak so my fear is aside from him being extradited aside from the silence that we see right now from the Western populations okay aside from the so-called those on the left that support his extradition aside from people actually following Schumer and Pelosi and these corporate totalitarian puppets that have been put into office to trumpet to to parrot uh, whatever or say whatever that their masters their handlers have told them to say okay aside from all of that I hope Julian Assange does not go on hunger strike he's not cornered to a place where he goes on hunger strike because he will if I was a betting man and I am I would bet that he would see it to the end and that might just like Bobby Sands hunger strike that might give the movement a huge boost in energy and make people uh, so appalled with the system that they rise up but personally I would rather not uh, lose uh, someone on that caliber or anyone for that matter right okay man I got it from here awesome Zari thank you very much thank you very much Aside from that, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Um, and it, I've been having, you know, since loading up the previous video on uh, on uh, YouTube, the, I've had some comments where people are saying they disagree with me, which I can appreciate. If you want to disagree, you disagree. That is fine. Okay. Um, I've had people comment. I've had the people unsubscribing to my <laughs> YouTube youtube channel which is unfortunate right um hopefully they will come back when we start producing uh less politically charged content because i believe uh, that content is extremely important as well right it's taking power away from uh, established legacy entertainment and information education is taken away from central power right hi i'm, I'm Hi, I'm Link. Link. Hi, Link. How are you doing? Thank you for popping into the stream. Nice bookshelf. Thank you very much. Okay, um, but people have been coming on there and saying, uh, "What type are they? Da, 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 what type are they? Uh, they're everything. They're comic books, health books, uh, political books, economic books, science and math books, physics books, construction books. Uh, I have a. I have more than the this bookshelf behind me. It goes up away and I have a couple of bookshelves in other places and some more books and boxes at some point I'm gonna be putting up all my books you got any philosophy yeah I got some philosophy as well okay one of them uh, that I really like actually this one is good I like this between in heaven and hell okay it's uh, uh, a conversation sort of a made-up conversation between John F Kennedy CS Lewis and Aldous Huxley and I've read a lot of CS Lewis he's the author that I've read the most and I highly recommend reading CS CS Lewis if uh, you've never read CS Lewis okay uh, amazing amazing uh, philosophy working my awesome da -da 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 -da. I would like to hear the opposition in the Assange case okay Kazi here's one of the opposition's comments that someone made uh, regarding Assange there's more uh, my pleasure link uh, 
someone someone mentioned that Julian Assange is a thief. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, he we know that he hasn't he didn't steal any of the leaks or hack anything. We know that as a fact, right? That has already come out, right? The indictment from the United States that he hacked this stuff is just garbage, right? It's just BS. Anyone that believes official U.S. policy on this, official U.S. releases announcements that the corporate propagandists, mainstream media in the Western world parrots, like I can't even, like where should we begin? Where should we begin to say where, when they lied, right? I mean, the most, one of the most devastating was they lied you into a war, into invading Iraq, right? Why in the world would you believe anything that they have to say, right? But, you know, one person mentioned, and they're a longtime follower on my channel, and we had a nice civil discussion about this, and that's fine, right? But other people have mentioned this as well, right? They say that Julian Assange is a thief. Now, let's assume he stole the stuff, right? So he committed a crime, and he didn't. Bradley Manning leaked the information to Assange. He took that information. We know that as a fact, right? Like, that's, the U.S. government even doesn't dispute that, right? In the original case with Bradley Manning, okay? But let's assume Assange has something to do with it. So he stole something, okay? What that that information revealed to us? That information revealed war crimes horrendous war crimes not one instant of war crimes but multiple instances of war crimes and corruption and rigging elections right fixing the system Cor like huge what they revealed is capital punishment in majority of the world in majority of countries in the world Right, Pe including in the United States, it would be execution, right? The crime for it. So, theft versus war crimes, and people people are saying that the people who committed the war crimes have the right to prosecute the person that may have, let's assume in the other, may have stolen the proof that these war criminals committed war crimes. And that information is in the public best interest to know that me and you are being ruled over by war criminals. You can't even compare the two, right? You can't even compare the two. The fact that people seem far more bothered about some dubious at best rape accusation that, yeah, I'm going to allow that. Uh, and that those accusations, uh, they are the collateral murder video yeah the collateral murder video is huge right and by the way Matt I have to approve your comment because you use the word which is in the indictment which is rape right uh, but one thing that I found out while catching up on all the info the last couple of couple of days was that uh, the Swedish government questioned Assange right when the allegations came through when he was in Sweden and they gave him the go-ahead and stated that there was nothing to them and that's why he was able to leave sweden in sweden and go to the uk right so we know that stuff is garbage the allegations coming out of sweden it's just pure garbage it's just a pretext to be able to for the united states to get their hands on julian assange so the government of sweden has been bought and paid for it's controlled by the united states the government of the UK is controlled by the United States. I mean, when I saw the UK Parliament with Theresa May proudly announcing announcing that Julian Assange was arrested and the majority of the UK Parliament clapping their hands and cheering, if I was a UK citizen, I'd freeze frame, take a picture of that Parliament, find out exactly who was in support of Julian Assange being arrested that was cheering this incident basically they're committing treason they're, they're okay with committing treason with with they with their government being run by the United States 
them give, being given the marching orders. So right now, we know that the UK Parliament it does not represent the British people. It is governed by Brussels, the European Union, and the United States. Wow, what a puppet state. Really incredible. UK, gov UK Parliament is in a bit of shambles right now. Yeah, 100% agreement. It's a joke, right? They don't, I, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen in the next elections. And I hope it's sooner rather than later because Jeremy Corbyn has already come out and said, Julian Assad, Assange should not be extradited, right? Right there, Corbyn gets my full support if I was in the UK, guaranteed. Tabard would get my full support if I was in the UK. I really don't know my Canadian government is bought and paid for as well, corrupt to the core, right? So I've been busy following what's happening in Ecuador, United States, and the UK, okay? Just because that affects Julian Assange. Is WikiLeaks being run by Russian opera? No, it's not. They might be different types of nationalities working for WikiLeaks because it's international. And here's the thing with Julian Assange that people really have to appreciate, okay? He's a martyr right he's martyring himself for humanity Corbyn has had uh, the support of the British youth for a minute now <laughs> so Julian Assange has come out and said I will put my life and my body in jeopardy okay to help humanity to help the globe right and he is in that situation where his life is 100% threatened. I mean, if you saw the video of him coming out, really, right? Crazy. Okay. So he should, he is considered, salute from Canada, salutations, brother. He, in many countries, would be considered to be martyring himself, right? And he's not martyring himself. He's not put, he's not put his life, his... Uh, physical well-being his mental well-being on the line right for his race his religion his country okay some kind of ideology if you, you could think about it as an ideology as a belief but he's put his life on the line for all of us irrelevant if you're living in the United States, if you're living in Europe, if you're living in Canada, South America, Asia, Africa, Eastern Europe, okay, Antarctica, living on the moon, okay, doesn't make a difference. If you're a human being, Julian Assange is trying to help you out, right? If you don't represent an institution, okay? That's who Julian Assange is. Now, what he is doing i've had people turn to me and say if i think he's a nice guy if i like julian assange i blows my mind that question right because to me it's irrelevant if i like him as as a as a person he is sacrificing himself for me he has my full support 100 percent. anybody that doesn't understand that they don't know history they don't know current geopolitics economics and they have no idea what's coming into the future they are living in a bubble okay they are delusional okay just wanted to get that out to make people appreciate who julian assange is as well as bradley manning really huge huge respect Corbyn has had the super pa, 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 pa. the UK will never leave the EU it's hilarious we ever thought it was a choice UK man I have no idea how they're how they're going to convince the majority of people living in the UK not to leave the EU okay the EU is in trouble really it's going to go through some serious economic hard times coming soon i believe okay 
it's a sinking ship i if i was in the uk i want out of the eu has chicho talked about the fact that his country uh australia is not protecting him i haven't got into australia yet australia is a joke not australians i've had many australian friends and there's there's a lot of australians right now that i'm following their news feeds okay juice media being one of them uh susie dawson uh anyway i forget their names i'm following them on twitter a lot of australians are appalled at the australian government the australian government is a joke it's a puppet and this is how much of a puppet the australian government has been okay in the mid 2000s in the build up or early 2000s in the build up to the iraq invasion okay where the united states got their coalition together and went in right one of the biggest disasters in human history okay where all the corporate propagandists the corporate media in the western world supported this war right before the build up to the war the prime minister of australia gave a speech on why australia should help in the invasion of iraq okay and the prime minister of canada gave the same speech in parliament <laughs> right like the absurdity of it is just mind-boggling the prime minister of australia and the prime minister of canada almost word for word stood up in their respective parliaments and gave the same speech as to why they should invade iraq now at the time the prime minister of australia the person that gave the speech i forget howard i believe he was the prime minister of uh, australia at the time canada was lucky we were lucky harper was the opposition leader he wasn't the prime minister of canada otherwise canada would have also participated in in the invasion of iraq they did it logistically quietly without announcing it but canada would have had, would have had soldiers in iraq when they invaded iraq right luckily harper was not the prime minister of canada just imagine two countries of the five eyes nations right two countries in this regime got up two leaders of party got up and gave the same speech to invade another country who gave him that speech who wrote that speech for them you whispering mofo i love your strings <laughs> thanks brother <laughs> hey booker <laughs> dick cheney dick cheney good guess good guess sweden is a joke also was born there they used to have integrity and was more of a neutral country against the vietnam war for example now they are doing anything us wants because they ex export a lot of lottery yeah i i was very disappointed with St sweden i thought more of sweden very disappointed Nelson Mandela had stood for similar no war ideology and a just cause, yet he was imprisoned for a lifetime. And after he died, the same people who actually convicted him and removed him from his position made him, made his funeral. When you have a group of people who can who can such a thing, it's absurd to even think we uh, could do anything about it. Uh, I think you're wrong. I agree with what you're saying. It, it, the whole ideology of uh what happened in south south africa is ridiculous right it was hijacked by fanatics again right but i disagree that we can't do anything about it we can do something about it we can stop consuming their bs okay because right now we live in a totalitarian in most western governments and most most governments in the world it's a totalitarian state inverted totalitarian state state and inverted totalitarian is basically uh i picked this up from chris hedges uh writings uh where he's quoting sheldon walden i've read some of sheldon walden's i haven't read his books or anything like this but i've read some excerpts of it right but basically inverted totalitarian is where 
economics trumps politics, where all political decisions, domestic and foreign, are made for economic, short-term economic gain. And this was, uh, this isn't a theory, this is fact. Harper in Canada, when he became prime minister, right, he stated this numerous times, that Canada is not playing politics, right? We're not, they don't care about political stance. All they care about is economic stance. So all the decisions they made, the first priority is how does it affect Canada economically? Forget about rights, forget about what's just, forget about international laws, doesn't make a difference. Economics trumps politics, economics trumps money, right? I'm sorry, economics trumps what's right, the truth, right? Basically, money trumps everything else, which is insane, which is insane. And it's short term, right? It's about religion. Uh, Sweden was about Vikings and warriors. Now it's about trying to make it make it be as we can be. The Eva, sorry, <laughs> make it be. <laughs> you broke up their uh, uh, IB, okay? So it's it's insane, it's insane, okay. And I've been, uh, I usually I'm not very active on Twitter to a certain degree, but I've been following a fair bit of stuff coming out on Twitter, and um, uh, just following people. Usually I I take my time and read more in depth articles, not sound bites, but uh, and it's crazy what's going on there. Sorry, dude, I'm not in the tune today. No worries, no worries, brother. <laughs> There weren't any Vikings in Sweden by the time Sweden was a nation. True that, true that, race killer, racer kill, right? The nations didn't exist. 420, how are you doing? I believe the way religion is used nowadays is to distract people, to be honest, yeah, and to control people and to uh, basically uh, have money because I, I, it blows me away that people still give money to centralized religious institutions like how in the world can people justify giving money to the catholic church that like completely blows my mind right that well-intentioned people god-fearing people people who want to do good by the world are giving their hard-earned money to an institution that is disguised as a spiritual religious institution that in the background has, has sent their emissaries all over the globe, many of whom have molested children, right? And the centralized institution has known about it for more than decades, for centuries, right? They've known about what their priests have been doing. And not only have they not prosecuted those people, they've promoted them into this hierarchy. Insane, insane. I think all the morality pushing going on in Western society is, uh, sen uh, is in a sense the new religion. The old religion is horrendous as well, right? Look at most centralized religious institutions. It's just about power. The most important rule is the golden rule. Never do something to others that you don't want uh, uh, to get onto yourself. Uh, that actually, uh, Booker, uh, is considered, we talked about this through uh, this book, Skin in the Game, right? Through Nassim Nicholas Taleb's Skin in the Game. That rule that you're saying is actually the silver rule. The golden rule is defined as do unto others as you would wish, wish, wish them to do unto you, right? And that is a weaker rule than what you quoted which is considered to be the silver rule, which is don't do unto others what you do not want them to do unto you, right? Because the golden rule imposes, the silver rule is passive. It means let people be, 
right? Don't do unto others uh, things that you do not want done unto you. Uh, about the so-called rape allegations against Assange, I can tell you that uh, change from the beginning was sexual misconduct. What the girl accused Assange of doing was to sexual. Okay, I'm going to allow this for sure. Thanks for that. And just it's just uh, the terms. Autobot uh, uh, Robert was uh, picking that off. In any case, even at the full extent of the law in Sweden, Assange would only have gotten a fine, not prison. Cool. Thanks for the info. Uh, ch -ch -ch. The corporate media uh, lied to the people and made them blindly support the war in Iraq. This endangered far more lives than any leaks could ever do. People simply don't think about what they read. It pains them to be critical, 100%. And a lot of people don't have the time. Um, a lot of people don't have the time to call the corporate media for their BS. Like if you remember the first Gulf War, I'm pretty sure uh, there are many of you probably don't, right? But the in incubators, right? During the first Gulf War, they brought up girl that was like eight years old nine years old ten years old in front of congress or a committee then she started reading something and crying and saying that iraqi soldiers had gone into the hospital and taking babies out of incubators and taking them into the streets and killed them with knives and shot them and threw threw them out the window and stuff like this right this was all over the tv that was one of the just justifications for the first gulf war right that turned the american people into supporting a war with Iraq, right? Late, years later, it comes out that that girl was actually the daughter of one of the Kuwaiti millionaires that was representative of one of the their comp parliament people or something like this, and all of it was fabricated, was a lie. The corporate mainstream propagandists splattered this all over their news channel without even questioning it or digging down a little deeper than that to say hey that's a lie right <laughs> incredible think of what they hide in the vatican archives if the pope can't even get it yeah agreed agreed dudism is a cool religion dudism. <laughs> I just, about the okay so we read that uh, sweden Hey man, you are doing a great job here. I'm a little drunk and fading away, but my respect to your goal. My pleasure, man. I hope you're enjoying your buzz. Okay. If you need to go to sleep, go to sleep, but eat something first. Drink a lot of water. Yeah, that's insane. Like, I don't get it. How can they get away with it? Uh, it blows me away. I, they get away with it because uh, for me, the root cause of our problems are, is our education system. People have been have gone through our centralized education system believing that passive education is the way to be, right? Is what's required of them. And if they just want to be a cog in the machine, if they just want to be a tool that is used and abused by the powers that be, right? By their overlords, by their masters, sure, consume life passively, right? That's what our current education system has done. To really be able to live your life and know who you are and understand how the world functions, you have to be active in what you do. You have to be critical of information. You have to be approach this in a scientific manner with a with a critical thought, with mathematical perspective, right? Which is why math education has deteriorated so much in the Western world, right? It doesn't allow people to do critical thinking okay that's my take anyway hope you don't get hung over <laughs> drink lots of water no hangovers also about morality this is used to be uh, this is used to uh, legitimize war uh, Gaddafi is bad so we are allowed to kill him yeah like yeah incredible right Oh, do we have access to the Vatican archives with weeklies? I doubt it. No, we don't. It would, Julian Assange would have been, and every single member of uh, WikiLeaks would have been assassinated a long time ago if they had access 
to the Vatican Archives. I hope some someday humanity does, uh, but I'm pretty sure the Vatican, if it ever comes to that, if the masses, uh, you know, march on the Vatican, and I've been there, if they march on the Vatican and surround it and demand the archives to be released, I'm pretty sure uh, the priests, the popes, the bishops and all them, they'll just burn the place to the ground. Because if that information comes out, then we're going to see a huge change in the direction that humanity is going. And it will be a positive change. Nowhere near all of them. Doubt they made them digital. Doubt it. Very much doubt it. Who is allowed to choose who is the uh, baddie? Exactly. Who is allowed to choose who is the baddie? What do you imagine is in the archives? <laughs> we could go down a rabbit hole on that one. Like if you spread enough propaganda to make one side look bad enough, can you then intervene? Uh, they have. That's what they've done, right? Look at the way they invaded uh, Iraq. The person... Um, let me find another article on my... On my site, Iraq, Iraq, on the step Remind the recording to the UN Charter, Mark Jamal, the British military. Here's what happened. The hypocrisy, actually. Oh, where is that? Uh, the death squads. Uh, what happened? I mean, seriously, what was his name? Oh, where did I put it? Actual jubilation of Queen. Uh, Oh, I can't find it. I don't want to dig around my site too much. I want to be uh, active on the live stream. Uh, do, 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 do. One thing I've noticed is that the whole media circus, now where the, uh, know where the pawns stumble over each other uh, to smear Assange. Yeah. Now, everything is about the individual, even the reaction from the Assange supporters. WikiLeaks is an organization, and I hope they are uh, using this time well while all, all eyes are on Assange. What do you think about the indig individual versus people joined as a group? Um, the problem with the individual is that's what the corporate mainstream media, the propagandists and the centralized power wants it to be about, right? I mean, take a look at the U.S. elections, Hillary or Trump. It's not about Hillary or Trump, right? Trump. Is a nobody Hillary even though she's one of the most evil creatures that I've ever read about or encountered in my life is, is a nobody right she's just someone who said yeah I will commit horrendous acts to for whatever agenda she was handed right so we have to get away from that we have to appreciate that things are a system and the most important thing we need to do is hold the systems in account more be critical of the systems and analyze those systems right the worst thing is when they found there was no weapons of mass destruction they just tried to forget all about it yeah and that's the thing uh, racer killer was trying to find for you where is that hypocrisy let me see if I can find it there's a lecture by the weapons inspector which was uh, the UN weapons inspector which was American uh, that came out and said there was no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and oh, I can't find it I'm sorry um, that it, what was his name very important person very important person he gave speeches and came out just constantly against the iraq invasion right he was the american un representing the united states as a un's weapons inspector saying there are no weapons of mass destruction there are no weapons of mass destruction we should not go to war against iraq it's going to be devastating it's ridiculous blah, blah, blah. the u.s government took him up right they they fired him they put someone else in in there that supported the war agenda, right? Uh, Paul 
not just the R4. Let me just get caught, caught up to where is I that uh, 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 They can't have their paradigms uh, disturbed. Their minds are so enslaved and conditions. Never heard truer words spoken of the heathen, of that heathen. <laughs> that, yeah, oh my God. Uh, Trump is a multi-billionaire though. Trump is a schmuck. Trump is a nobody. Trump is just a name. You know all those Trump hotels? He doesn't own those hotels. He rents out his name as Trump. Trump has declared bankruptcy multiple times or and gone under bankruptcy protection. Trump is owned by the bankers. Okay. Trump is a nobody. Trump is just a talking head they decided to put out to uh, bring in, uh, consolidate the support that they knew that was out there to get their agenda across just the same way they did with Obama right it's, that's all and Trump is not a billionaire okay on paper all exaggerated but as the saying goes if you ever trade on Wall Street on stocks it's paper money how much is it when you liquidate when you try to pull out okay I mean they try to change if if you can even pull out right I mean they try to change the agenda no one takes the blame no WMD who cares let's talk about something else exactly racer kill and Obama came out with that when he came into power right all oh, mistakes were made uh, let's forget about them and move move forward right mistakes were made are you kidding me dude hundreds of thousands of people were murdered mistakes the country was annihilated refugees were created mistakes were made you call that a mistake really i call that war crime and people should be held accountable for it pocket change to those really in uh pocket change to those really in power man there is a brilliant concept coined by noam chomsky called manufactured consent agreed zare have you guys heard of it look it up brilliant 100 percent agree i'll read that again from zare man there is a brilliant concept coined by noam chomsky called quote manufactured consent end quote have you guys heard of it look it up brilliant so did 50 cents though ba, ba, ba. Uh, if the casino failed the bank would have failed uh failed trump at the bank uh bent over yeah dave chappelle's iraq war george bush sketches him dave chappelle's fantastic when they asked hillary clinton on a interview how does she feel about the fact it wasn't hillary clinton it was madeline albright uh cater when they asked madeline albright so i'm just going to correct correct you and i'm going to read this when they asked madeline albright on an interview how does she feel about the 500,000 children who were uh 12 years and younger killed during the invasion of iraq i call it invasion because a war by definition requires two army uh of similar power uh, fighting against each other but when you have the nato and un more than 100 countries preemptively organizing a genocide overseas sending someone else's son to die was all the pol politics are uh, relaxing and, and yeah the 500,000 children clinton's watch right and they died because of the sanctions it was George Bush senior that started that war right the 500,000 children died because of the sanctions that the Clintons brought about that Bush senior for sure but Clintons brought about as well look into the highway of death if you want to see war crimes right that, that's pure war crime you cannot annihilate a retrieving uh, retreating army that is uh, anyway look into the highway of death as well oh, we're getting a little troll action let me turn off the chat on the screen Whoop. let's see i think we're getting troll action she said we can't have omelets without breaking eggs oh no ryan uh the, the peace is good as a korean peace is peace is good everywhere What's he talking about? Iraq war. Politics are <laughs> superior. Well, I sure do love talking about death and war. 
Well, I personally don't like it, but it is part of the game. I'm putting the chat back on. Okay. What's the talking about? Politics around superior hands. Yes. I think they are afraid of groups. The narrative is about the individual for a reason. Yeah. It's the Robert Mercer's of the world that are pulling the strings, guys. Ba -ba -ba. No, Assange makes it about him. The dead man switch shouldn't exist if it's just the just to publish uh this through us organizations which wikileaks isn't um superior one thing um when you're operating on this level or any level really it's like a poker game right so you should always have a little bit of ammunition left to use okay so when you if you've ever played poker right even if you have an amazing hand you don't want to go all in okay just in case just in case if you've ever played poker you'll know this you lose the most amount of money when you have the best hands that's happened to me when you make those huge bets when you have a sure thing is when you lose the most you got to keep some of your cards close to your chest you got to keep a little bit of float in front of you otherwise you're done for this is not about a one-time bet this is the long game no Assange makes it about ba -ba -ba. is he talking about me if he is I'm not sure no I turn it on again brother or sister off topic but I like your necklace bro thank brother wood I like wood and I like wood selective uh, publication results and bias are uh, true but they, they also have to vet the information right they also have to vet the information and you can't uh, one of the problems we've been having is people can't absorb all this information in one shot i haven't even been able to okay simple term please i don't understand um in what which aspect brother if we want to tone it down a little bit let me know we do okay Someone's laughing. <laughs> craziness, craziness. Thank you for the follows and the subs, people. I'm sorry if I haven't been catching the uh, mentioning this before. If you're following and subbing, thank you for the follows and the subs. Uh, you disagreed about the fact that we can't do anything about it. But if I may ask, what action must we take as a simple individual and honest citizen? against such a tremendously influential global co uh, corporate uh, i'll answer that uh, cater my apologies if i go on tangents just everything bro okay i'll i'll tone it down a little bit just to uh just to explain okay and by the way um i gotta read your name ryan this is day two of a stream we did uh we did a stream on this yesterday as well so you're catching the second half of the stream of this topic that we're covering so we covered a lot of stuff in yesterday's stream and you can find that video on youtube and bit shoot okay uh, but we'll cover a little bit more uh and i'll try to explain a little bit further okay chicho first time going joining you live thank you for having a forum for this kind of important discussion my pleasure thank you very much for coming here singer okay uh, i'm not good at english so i don't understand the subject words are difficult okay um that's our korean friend uh, KJH let me address the question uh, which uh, cater put out which is how what can we do individually to try to uh, let me read this honestly such as uh, take as individual and honest citizen against such a tremendous influential global corporate corporation or corporates is this Julian guy why he's getting arrested I'd like to know he owns wikileaks that he started wikileaks okay he started wikileaks as for what we can do stop buying their bs like money talks okay so if you find uh, boycotting is a, a brilliant way to go right brilliant way to go right don't buy their bs if you find that a corporation is polluting your rivers your environment don't buy their products right 
uh, shop locally. Eating food is a huge aspect of things, right? So look into your community to find out where your local farms are and try to buy from them directly. Okay. Another thing we can do is participate in local politics. Local politics is huge. What power wants to do is centralize power, right? What we need to do is to take that power away from them is decentralize that power. Okay. Let me uh, see if I can approve superior hands. I'm going to approve superior hands without reading it because you've been here, right? Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, some of the other things we can do. So, for example, uh, I'll take it to Julian Assange's case, right? Just imagine, just imagine if when the word came out because wikileaks has been correct on 100 percent of things they've released right so a few days before julian assange was going to be was removed from the ecuadorian embassy wikileaks released the information saying they're about to come and get him right so just imagine when they said they're about to come and get him all of a sudden you saw a few thousand people go to the ecuadorian embassy and camp out there right just block the whole place off what would have had to happen is the uk government would have had to br bring in force to disperse all those people to get into the ecuadorian embassy to remove julian assange that one simple act if people had blockaded the ecuadorian embassy and that means putting our health our our finances our where did i put this it would have had to mean that we would have to have skin in the game right if people had done that then that would have been a huge huge blow to corporate power huge blow huge blow okay so active physically putting your body there's a, there's a quote from the 1960s where this person speaking saying it's time to throw our bodies into this machine and stop the wheels from turning right i'm paraphrasing i forget who that person was right to prevent this machine from grinding us down over an extended period of time it's time for us to break this machine right that means making sacrifices both financially and physically okay those are some of the things that can be done for me one of the things i'm doing personally if i want to take it on a personal level for me i've narrowed it down where i can be more effective in what i'm doing because i've gone to tremendous number of protests back in the day and i've done things where people maybe i'll share them with you at one point but for me right now my biggest bang for my activism is to do this stuff that I'm doing right now to create content online and teach mathematics that's where I feel that I have the biggest effect right now as well as keeping things local and talking to people and if I come across people locally friends and family where they I find them parroting propaganda from corporate mainstream media then I'm pretty harsh with them I lay down like what I just read you one of the reasons I started blogging which is one of the first things you need to do as well is inform yourself that way when you come across propaganda you can cut it off right there take out its legs right and I've done that a lot but one of the reasons I started blogging sharing information and doing a lot of research and linking information on a lot of my almost all of my articles that I was writing okay was because when I would get into discussions with people where they were parroting central centralized power uh, talking points that they heard from corporate mainstream media, I would just annihilate them with facts, right? And at the end, I would say, go read this article, go read this article, boom. If they ever came up to me again, they wanted to talk about the same thing, I would say, have you read the article? Do you have any opinion about some of the facts I said? Can you... Can you uh, uh, debate me on them and they couldn't i would say go away you're not 
intelligent enough, wise enough, informed enough, or care enough to talk about the subject. And if you don't care enough to be informed about a subject that you're putting your full weight and support behind, then you shouldn't be debating people about this thing. You should go about eating chips. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> okay. That's that's the way I do it. I've missed a lot of uh, a lot of um, chat here. My apologies. I'm gonna work from the bottom up. Okay. One of the things which really hurt people is how easy companies can move. <coughs> companies used to be rooted and uh, therefore be much more invested into their employees. Yeah. Uh, seems like a uh, worldwide phenomenon about the uh, occupation. The rich are doing it through puppet governments affecting the rest of us. Yeah, it's merely merely late capitalism. Agreed on this. It is late capitalism. And this is basically what we're seeing right now is the collapse of, of this economic system. And it's a sinking ship. And those in power are grabbing as much as they can, as fast as they can, before the whole thing crumbles, right? And we have to be aware of that. And one thing we need to do is build systems, safety nets, and link up within our communities to make sure that people feel safe and they won't be taken advantage of by power, okay? That's one thing that... I remember uh, Noam Chomsky was asked uh, a while ago, a few years ago, uh, why he still had money in the stock market if he was an anarchist and he disagreed with the system and stuff like this. And his reply was this. He said, there's a lot of people that want to destroy the system, break down the system, right? But they're making a mistake because they're not building alternate systems for people to fall back on. So it's not enough to break systems down. You also have to build alternate systems where people can migrate to. That's one of the things that personally I'm doing right now, I'm trying to do right now, okay? I agree too, you're a unionist, yes, I don't know. What does that mean? Which part of it, Ryan? There's a lot of words, uh, Ryan, there's a lot of words being used that have implications like unionist and capitalist and this and that and whatnot. So one of the ways to really get informed about things is to not associate yourself with any words per se, any titles, but learn about how certain systems function, right? So when people mention a couple of different words that are supposed to be like umbrellas that, are, that take you into, you know, put you into a bubble, you have to appreciate that a lot of these bubbles have overlapping thoughts so you don't want to get stuck with the with the title you want to understand how it works okay and that requires a little bit of time that requires a little bit of time really uh, education is not rapid education takes time are you a communist for your hands can't really be against capitalism then it was built on slavery and greed just like uh, capitalism the these titles like when I say capitalism I'm implying corporate capitalism crony capitalism welfare capitalism inverted totalitarianism the system that we have right now let's call it Wall Street okay the banking system the Wall Street system that we have right now is on the decline right they have a tremendous amount of power it's gonna take decades for it to lose its power but we're seeing the beginning of that right we're seeing it with uh cryptocurrencies blockchain technology we're seeing it through their actions by the laws that they're passing on what they're trying to uh implement right a lot of places centralized power what they're trying to do is create cashless societies right by creating cashless societies digitizing everything centralizing everything that gives them more power what we need to do is make sure we don't fall into that trap where we're buying everything digitally start carrying cash with you okay 
there are some places in the world that have local currencies look into local currencies look into barter systems look into websites online where you can do trade okay do i believe in marxism I, there's so much implied with that superior hands uh, i can't say i believe in marcus marxism capitalism communism or anything like that i i believe that all systems are majority of systems we have right now are corrupt to the core okay we have to create new systems oops just the korean stuff talks a lot about impeachment so does britain also i'm not a comment what do you mean britain talks about do, 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 do. Psh, psh. hey chicho my friend hope you're well ah green tech how are you doing doing well brother thank you very much yo do you guys actually know what he's saying the amount of big words he's saying is actually scaring me a bit <laughs> the hate speech laws here are a joke if you uh, if you speak uh, if your speech is censored that's a big red flag the police uh, police waste their time arresting people over a nasty yeah, pug video rather than rape yeah agreed and some of the people uh, journalists have come out from uh, New Zealand and Australia saying these journalists were being surveilled while those who are committing violent acts are not being monitored who they know they're tracking because they're too busy spending resources watching over surveying journalists right people who just write about the problems in the system right the our current centralized governments can be looked at looked upon as being gangs cartels with enforcers with prosecutors uh, it's crazy okay one of the things you can look into is the kids for cash thing that happened in the united states where two judges were getting five thousand dollar kickback for every kid child youth that they sent to a private prison youth prison look into that i was following that and writing about it when it first happened just imagine two judges in the united states and this is two out of tens of thousands of judges right there are more of these two judges were taking kickback i five thousand dollars a pop when a kid came into their court where the kid just needed a slap on the hand or just needed a talking to and didn't really commit anything okay didn't really do anything the judges would bring the hammer down on them and send them to a private juvenile detention center and as soon as they did that the people running the, the corporation running the detention center would give the judges basically five thousand dollars for every kid they sent wow right just imagine just imagine how many tens of thousands of lives american lives these judges and these corporations destroyed now just imagine if wikileaks had acquired that information and released it to the public would people consider that theft would it be justified right i'm missing a fair bit of conversation i'm going to scroll down a little bit again capitalism to me is uh me will always boil down to these problems i'll never work wait what that's <laughs> mental yeah that's mental i think it was about the impeachment of korea and the brexit of uk the biggest recent events of their kind not impeachment of korea but 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 i feel people take big offend uh, big offended as uh, as a bad as bad as getting physically assaulted sometimes yeah uh, yeah for some reason people are assuming it's, I, I guess it's called uh, I'm gonna call this I'm gonna burn for this but uh, I'm gonna call this uh, uh, what do you call it uh, first world uh, problems right people think that they should never be offended there are many things in this life that offend me 
I'm, I'm not lobbying governments to pass centralized laws to prevent from prevent things from offending me that is insane it's a nanny state right it's okay to be offended and okay to offend nothing really happened it's just opinion and words i'm not talking racist hate speech but more opinion on religion immigration politics etc sometimes it gets so extreme people can't even have a discussion unless they align with the mass correct opinion 100 percent agreed tech 100 percent agreed speak of money back for prisoners nearly every drug law was created for that purpose uh, at least the original cannabis ban and textiles and energy and stuff like that for sure but the prison industrial complex uh, America's war on war on drugs 100% the prison aspect of it and the law enforcement aspect of it huge part to play that's why I support uh, law enforcement against prohibition right that's why I created uh, 420 math I put that content up no brexit isn't impeachment impeachment means taking away from the government what the people voted pa, 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 pa. is capitalism good or bad i don't get it um, it depends what you imply by capitalism we don't by true definition of capitalism like if you if you use one sentence definition of capitalism we don't have capitalism i have bad 420 says i'm trying to educate myself more about history and world economics but i don't want to waste my time reading irrelevant or propaganda newspapers besides skin in the game what else do you recommend i recommend this days of destruction days days of revolt okay important book okay julian assange that was um, when he was being dragged out the uk embassy he held up a book by gore vidal and the real news net real news net is a good place to get your information but gore vidal's book this book i read is fantastic gore vidal perpetual war for which perpetual peace it's good to read okay uh, other books good to read uh, this is an important book to read very important relates to julian assange wilhelm reich in hell by robert anton wilson it's about this person oh i don't have the book here i'm reading it right now but it's about wilhelm reich uh where uh he was a person that both nazi germany and the u.s government persecuted okay there is other books as well right chris edges start reading some of the journalists that are out there right now or following some of the journalists out there right now and slowly start reading some of the content that they're referencing that's the way i began and noam chomsky of course too right if you want to know your history noam chomsky i don't know you know it could be this one or multitude of other books that he's written or just read some of his essays okay noam chomsky is good uh, there are others the government should just print us more money <laughs> am i right guys but the government didn't print us more money they printed the bankers more money they gave all the money to wall street and the banks what we saw was nothing compared to what they got there's a reason why house prices real estate there's tremendous inflation in the world is because those who got the free money or have bought up stuff right i didn't get any of the money where's my money right <laughs> the uk impeaches its own people can so um rendition maybe you mean ryan uh, extract can someone define impeachment impeachment is when um, the people the citizens of a country their political uh the congress the the members of parliament if you talk about parliamentary system uh members of parliament decide to take their head of state and put him on trial or fire him basically impeachment basically means you fire the person in charge in large part okay perpetual war for perpetual peace i'm going on my phone now. <laughs> nice it's a good book it's about on the oklahoma city bombing and about timothy mcveigh okay and more of course and he references stuff here and gore vidal is 
good to read as well. And Howard Zinn is good to read as well. But uh, that perpetual war for per perpetual peace is a fast read. Thank you very much, Chicho. I'll start with those. Awesome, awesome. I hope you find them informative. Uh, what's the reason for Brexit? Is it because there is no benefit compared to the big levy among the member countries? Uh, is because the trickle down effect is not working. What's happening with Brexit is it's centralizing power. So those people in governments that are connected and have access to centralized power, they're acquiring more power. And those people who are living in more of the suburb areas and the rest of the country, they're not in London or Brussels or whatnot, right? They haven't migrated to the centralized power where the money is, right? They're being destroyed. They're being as uh, days of destruction in this book, what Chris Hedges refers to, they're the sacrifice zones. And the end result, uh, the end game for the current economic system we have right now, the whole world will become a sacrifice zone, except for some private cities where they will have walls built around them, right? Where you will be surveilled 24 7 and you will be used uh, if you want in that city right you will have to work for the corporation that controls that city in the end game that's where we're headed that's the road that we're on okay about news outlets i can recommend the jimmy door show on youtube 100 percent uh, robert uh jimmy door jimmy door is fantastic at least he gave a good impression of sticking to the truth and he's probably closer to truth compared to others 100 percent. and one thing about jimmy Dore, he's not bought and paid for he's representing himself as a human being who has who's analyzing the information he's coming across right he's not being paid by a corporation to say what the corporation wants him to say right He's representing an individual human being. And if you're getting your news, the best thing you can do is to make sure you're getting your news from an individual that is representing their true thoughts. May it be the left, may it be the center, may it be the right, may it be off the charts, may it be anywhere it is, right? Don't buy into corporate propaganda, corporate media. That's the BS part. Uh, we have immigrants from poor countries like in Korea Korea let it uh, let in Chinese peasants to take working class jobs it makes the pay for everybody go down Romanians and Polish immigrants in UK push wages down also we have to abide by laws set by European uh, politicians rather than just just our our British politicians and superior superior um, what superior mentioned uh, a little more th more than this with the EU what's happening is there's unelected people in power in Brussels okay that's the European Parliament any country that belongs to the EU right Italy UK France Germany wherever they might be in Europe of course right Western Europe some the Eastern Europe they're trying to bring in with man what a disaster right so for example Italy recently passed the budget so elected leaders in Italy Italy as a country held elections they put their elected representatives into their government and that government came up with a budget for the country how they're going to spend their money where they're going to do cuts how they're going to improve the economy the leaders in Europe in Italy had to take that budget to Brussels to get it approved by these people who are not Italian, who were not elected by the citizens of Italy, right? They had to approve the Italian budget and they didn't approve it. So Italy had to rework their budget to meet the quota, the data, the percentages that the EU had set for them. They tried, they do the same thing with every european member uh country right that's the centralization power that's horrendous and the people in brussels bankers right the people 
who start wars. Just publish Parliament. Da, 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 da. I could be wrong, but I am. Uh, I am British. I feel like mass migration in Europe spurred the vote for a lot of the leavers as immigrants who get yeah 100 percent the mass migration the wagers come wages coming down right uh eu passport can then leave uh, live here so brits can't directly control their borders leading them to also think about what else we don't have real control of i think yeah 100 percent the lowering of wages is one of the biggest things that happened and the factories in Britain taking off and setting up shop in cheaper places to build with cheaper labor, right? So people lost uh, industry jobs, okay? Oh, I understand. If I go to the uh, construction site in front of my house, you can see more Chinese than Korean. There are a lot of people who complain about this basically i can see a federal a federal europe is unworkable yeah the way it's structured right now the uh, european union horrendous right i've got to go my fellow intellectuals it's 2 a.m wow 2 a.m ryan thanks for sticking around good stream bro thanks for being here ryan uh i hope i hope you enjoy it immigration like how it is done right now accelerates all wealth gap and by the way regarding immigration there is theories out there that one of the reasons that western powers have been destroying countries in africa south america asia and stuff like this is because they want this immigration to happen so the wages in the western countries will come down so the corporations can profit more okay did we lose the stream has our stream been cut hope not oh maybe it did i'm not sure if we lost the stream or not gang okay it devalues low skill jobs and increases housing prices look at how much apartments have increased yeah and just in case we got caught off i'm just going to follow it up with one more thing i said okay uh, my stream is way behind here <laughs> one more thing i said which is uh, there is a theory out there saying and there is a fair bit of uh, you could argue for it that Western powers have destroyed if you're hearing this again if the stream link it up I'll say it again right there's a theory out there that Western powers destroyed have been waging all these wars in Africa South America Asia and whatnot to create these refugees to create this mass migration so the population these refugees would flow into western countries so corporations so wages would be depressed right so corporations could make more profit by hiring people at lower wages sorry if i repeated myself but i just want to put that out i think the first time i said it came out better that's right that's 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 serious the worst thing is how the upper class let's call them think the economy is doing much better than it is because it's disproportionately benefiting them yeah 100 percent. which is one of the reasons why trump came into power right clinton and obama were constantly came on tv saying the economy is doing better but economy which economy wall street was doing better that was it right oh wow we've been going at this for two hours up time i've been going at this for two hours the whole economy is one huge bubble dude nothing but a uh but a biggest scam ever though yeah they're great i just got here what are we talking about oh spencer we're about to, we're about to end the stream we're about to end the stream i downloaded your book but can't open it in my app but i have had a, a liter of vodka uh, i hope you're able to open it later superior hands and by the way regarding digital books here's what i heard i heard, i only have one source for this supposedly microsoft had a digital library that you could buy books from right but you weren't really buying books you were renting books so what i've heard is they're closing down that service 
their digital book service it's like amazon books and stuff right they're closing down that down that service and anybody that had a library their books stored on there they had paid microsoft to have access to these books is going to lose their library which is one reason it's good to have hard copies okay do not centralize your reading uh, material into the hands of these central institutions. So basically our part to play as individuals is that each one of us must influence and affect positively people around us in the smaller circle first, such as our fam 100% friends and local communities by informing them and erase or try at least to correct their prejudice which they acquired and regurgitated from the mainstream media before focusing on the bigger picture in large part yes there is the bigger picture involved as well but for large part yes cater that's one thing for me as an individual uh, america's war on drugs i've been against prohibition for a number of decades now and for over 20 years i've been in major arguments with family as well as friends regarding prohibition right you should have seen some of the heated discussion even 10 years ago friends and family would tell me that i was out of my mind that prohibition on cannabis specifically would never end the stuff would never be legalized right 10 years ago they looked at me as a cuckoo right now when they look back at those conversations they realize they were morons right they were completely uninformed disinformed retarded right so over time uh, if you're in the right right you will be proven right okay but it takes time it takes a lot of energy that's so bad yes it's why Liverman got to free it's also helps uh, the politicians getting re-elected if they introduce immigrants which have the app yeah, for sure far less education or just grateful their lives yeah that's one of the things that happened uh, has happened in canada where there's a lot of money laundering happening so there was major people here with influence coming in that passed laws bought out governments uh, to pass laws to help them launder money more easily reddit was just uh, was set up by aaron schwartz originally on free information 100 percent aaron schwartz man i wish most people on reddit appreciated who aaron schwartz was at the time when aaron schwartz was being persecuted prosecuted and either suicided or driven towards committing suicide right uh, he was more prevalent on reddit reddit is just corporate uh, and for the most part is mainly corporate propaganda social site now okay you need to be on other platforms now to a certain degree to get a full picture of what's going on and that's going to become more and more prevalent more and more important western society is jaded and politicians by introducing immigrants da, 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 da. he was working there and was depressed uh from the corporate culture uh Aaron schwartz he was being uh hounded and prosecuted for hacking a uh, university site and taking all their papers scientific papers which were taxpayer funded which were behind paywalls and releasing them okay they're on the media yeah which is why these live streams and getting your news from individuals like jimmy Dore are important okay gang my voice is giving out a little bit we'll call the stream thank you very much for participating thank you very much for being here um, important topics important topics and we're going to cover one more important topic tomorrow saturday april 13 at 11 a.m and we're going to talk about education okay so if you're around tomorrow uh, if you're interested in education and you want to have a discussion on education sort of a Q&A and I'll give you my take on certain things I might set up the camera and record it as well um, there's a few things that I believe may come up and I might just make shorts of them and edit them and cut them off and load them on YouTube um, but tomorrow at 11 a.m.
Pacific time, Western time, I'll be here again. And if you guys are into it, we'll have further discussion. See you next stream, hopefully. Hopefully, Spencer. Thanks for popping by. Sorry if uh, we're ending it. Okay. Bye, gang. I'll talk to you guys uh, in the next stream. Thanks very much, Chicho. Thanks for a really interesting. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us from Korea. Interesting stream. Thanks, Bob. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for being here, gang. I'll see you guys tomorrow if you can make it. If not, in future streams. Take care, tech.